Okay, look, we're going to talk about uh, preparing patients for IVF and IUI now, specifically looking at treatment principles and formulas. So just a little bit of review of things we were talking about and a little bit of expansion when we were talking about acupuncture. Uh, the first thing when we're preparing for an IVF or IUI cycle is regulate their menstrual cycle uh, in the months or month leading up to it, depending you know, whether or not they're on um, down uh, regulation uh, hormones or not, or chemicals. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, so treating, treating problems that were evident in their previous cycles. Uh, and that means either from uh, the records that you've received from their other cycles as far as uh, dosages of hormones, uh, follicle growth, things like that, what patients relate to you. So if they've had poor follicle production, as we said before, we want to supplement blood, yin, and jing. And that's uh, basically if you've had uh, a, poor, a low number of follicles being produced. Right? Remember we also talked about the difference between yin versus jing and number versus quality. So on IVF cycles, you will have uh, the ability, at least somewhat, to be able, with previous IV, IVF cycles, for them to have an idea of how many, uh, what the quality of the eggs is like, because you'll see how many eggs were uh, fertilized, how many er, er, uh, eggs went on uh, to become fertilized and produce good embryos, and how many stopped uh, growing and never became uh, embryos which could be transferred. So if they've had poor quality uh, eggs in the past, you really want to focus on Jing. There could be other issues involved, uh, blood stasis, heat, things like that. But um, especially in older patients or patients who are poor responders, Jing is definitely of number one importance. If they've had good embryos and, and everything looks good, but then no implantation takes place, then you would want to be looking at uh, supplementing Yang, because there's a problem with Yang during the luteal phase of the cycle. Uh, moving blood because there's a problem with blood coagulation and we'll be talking about that a little bit more on this, in the second half of the seminar. And then also uh, regulating immune function which there's a whole uh, couple hours in the second half of the seminar on that. Um, then if, there's a, if they have implantation but then the pregnancy does not move forward and they have early miscarriages, uh, you're going to be looking at the same issues, uh, immune function, young deficiency and uh, blood moving as well. So we're going to focus a lot more on that um, later uh, in the second, set, second half of the seminar. So if they're on down regulation, they basically can uh, be treated according to their root pathologies. So it gives you kind of time to focus on the really deep root issues that the patients are having and not worry so much about where they are in their cycle or what's going on. So that means if they're on birth control or they're on something like Lupron. Um, a lot of things we're going to be talking now, about now under preparing for IUI and IVF cycles are also going to have to do with uh, what herbs and what formulas you should be giving for uh, stimulation part as well. So the general ideas here are uh, supplementing yin, yang, blood, and qi as necessary, uh, looking for deficiencies prior to them going into these cycles. And then um, also clearing excesses, cold, heat, phlegm, and down. And always keeping the chi moving due to also psychospiritual issues and liver chi stagnation. The same things are going to be true uh, for when patients are being stimmed. We're going to be supplementing yin, yang, blood, and chi uh, because those are things that are going to be used up in a sense by the hormones, especially yin and blood. And uh, as uh, the side effects of the hormones create uh, heat and uh, sometimes dampness or phlegm, those are things uh, that we're going to be uh, treating as well, as well as commonly and during the stimulation phase, you'll see qi becoming uh, static. This can also be true during down regulation as well. A lot of patients will get um, qi stasis, especially when they're using something like the birth control pill. Okay, so we're going to talk about some basic formulas here. Um, and these are formulas to use for supplementation of yin and blood. And uh, they're commonly used in regular non-IVF or IUI fertility cycles. 
uh, during the follicular phase, and that's why uh, they can be used either in preparation for an IVF or IUI cycle during downregulation or, or during the stim phase itself. So what we have here basically is uh, Lu Wei Di Wang Wan, with the uh, difference being the addition of Bai Xiao and Dang Gui, therefore Gui Xiao Di Wang Wan. Uh, this is uh, a strongly nourishing formula, but at the same time you, you have the drainers, which are the uh, Fuling, Mudan, Pi, and Zexia. Zexia was uh, not used in China because it's considered over long term to be toxic. I haven't found a whole lot of information about that, but the doctors of Soi and Nanjing did not include it as a part of their base formula, usually unless there was a specific need for it, and then it would be used for short term or something else would be used in its place. And we'll see in a second um, uh, Xu Shoutian's uh, base formula uh, for supplementation. Uh, the Bai Xiao and Dang Wei are strongly you know, used as a pair for supplementing liver blood, the Bai Xiao being slightly stringent, the Dang Wei being slightly moving, and then the three tonics of Xu Di, Shan Zhu Yu, and Shan Yao as uh, being uh, the, the main kidney uh, yin tonics here. Um, so a very nice balanced formula can be used for a long period of time and uh, something that you would be basing your uh, formula on in, in during the stimulation phase of a during a clomid or a, an IVF hormone cycle. Uh, Lao Shu is uh, older Shu, as I said, because of his son. That's why it's called Lao Shu's base formula. His full name is Shu Shou Tian. Uh, his base formula, as you can see, is a modification of uh, uh, Lu Wei Di Wang Wang, in a sense. So using the first three uh, supplementer uh, herbs, supplementers from uh, Lu Wei Di Wang Wang, the tonics of Shu Di, Shan Zhu Yu, and Shan Yao. Then due to the clawing nature of that, using uh, especially the Shu Di, using uh, Bai Zhu and Fu Ling to supplement spleen qi and also drain damp. Uh, don't forget that Fu Ling is also uh, uh, an herb that's used um, to affect the heart as well, where you might have uh, a buildup uh, of um, dampness or uh, heat in the heart. And then we also have uh, Bai Xiao, Chi Xiao used as a combination, both, and then Chi Xiao and Dan Shen for moving blood. So we don't see the Dang Wei or the drainers that we have, except for Fu Ling. We don't have the Mu Dan Pi or, like I said, the Zexia. And we definitely have much more uh, blood movers used in the base formula here. Uh, Chi Xiao is pretty strong, medium, you know, medium level uh, blood mover. Uh, Dan Shen would be a mild blood mover. And there's also really much stronger blood movers that we'll talk about more in the second half when we talk about things like uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome and things like that, and things that are also used for endometriosis and fibroids, etc. Things like uh, Tubia Chang or even Sam Lung and Aju. Uh, but here, Chi Xiao and Dan Shen uh, are used as a combination. Dan Shen is a very nice herb, it also cools the heart. So when you're in a stimulation phase of a cycle, uh, patients tend, do tend to get some heart heat, so the Dan Shen moves blood mildly, gets into the network vessels, which is also very important when we're talking about blood flow to the ovaries. And also, uh, Dan Shen is uh, a mild uh, blood mover and not being that strong either. So, um, Chi Xiao is also one of the cooling blood movers, so uh, and a little bit stronger as well. So this is a, also a very good formula to base uh, your formulas for um, uh, stimulation phase on as well. So uh, prior to an IVF IUI cycle or during, when you have patients with yin deficiency, uh, Nujenza Hanli and Sao are often used because they don't have their that cloying nature of Shu Di or Shang Di or Hui Ban or something along those lines, but they are uh, strong yin tonics, especially where there's yin deficiency heat. Um, so you would put in something to clear the yin deficiency heat, as we'll see, but also something to supplement yin. Then if there's something like a jing deficiency, gui ban, hushu wu, could be added to the prior formula we saw. Um, and hushu wu could also, uh, in some cases, be used to replace shu di because of the clawing nature. Uh, in in uh, Lao Shu's formula, we saw that uh, hushu wu uh, is, is really maybe not necessary because uh, something like Shu Di or even Gui Ban here is balanced by the uh, Bai Zhu and Fu Ling that he includes in the formula. For more information on this or other Prodi Live 
distance or online courses, please visit www.prodeseminars.com.